I'm very interested in how, how how you could use market forces to just get stuff done more efficiently, but give the right incentives to the market so that it wouldn't do really bad things. So Dylan had Phil Manel, who's a, a professor and colleague of mine at MIT, wrote this really interesting paper with some collaborators recently where they proved mathematically that if you just op take one goal that you just optimize for on and on and on indefinitely that you think is going to bring you in the right direction, what basically always happens is in the beginning, it will t make things better for you. But if you keep going, at some point, it's going to start making things worse for you again. And then gradually, it's going to make it really, really terrible. So just as a simple, the way I think of the proof is, like, suppose you want to go from here back to Austin, for example, and you're like, okay, yeah, let's just let's go south, but you put in exactly the right sort of the right direction. Just optimize that south as possible. You get closer and closer to Austin, but uh, you, you, there's always some little error. So you, you you're not going exactly towards Austin, but you get pretty close. But then eventually you start going away again, and eventually you're going to be leaving the solar system. <laughs> Yeah, and they they proved it's a beautiful mathematical proof. This happens generally, and this is very important for AI because for, for even though Stuart Russell has written a book and given a lot of talks on why it's a bad idea to have AI just blindly optimize something, that's what pretty much all our systems do. Yeah, we have something called the loss function that we're just minimizing, or reward function we're just minimize maximizing, and um. Capitalism is exactly like that too. We wa we wanted to get stuff done more efficiently than people wanted. So, we introduced the free market. Things got done much more efficiently than they did in, in say, communism, right? And it got better. But then it just kept optimizing it. Uh, and kept optimizing, and you got ever bigger companies and ever more efficient information processing, and now also very much powered by IT. And uh, eventually, a lot of people are beginning to feel, wait, we're kind of optimizing a bit too much. Like, why did we just chop down half the rainforest? You know, and why, why did suddenly these regulators get captured by lobbyists and so on? It's just the same optimization that's been running for too long. If you have an AI that actually has power over the world and you just give it one goal and just like keep optimizing that, most likely everybody's going to be like, yay, this is great in the beginning. Things are getting better. But um, it's almost impossible to give it exactly the right direction to optimize in. And then eventually all, all hey break, breaks loose, right? Nick Bostrom and others have given it, examples that sound quite silly. Like what if you just want to like tell it to, cure cancer or something, and that's all you tell it, maybe it's going to decide to take over entire continents just so it can get more supercomputer facilities in there and figure out how to cure cancer backwards. And then you're like, wait, that's not what I wanted, right? <laughs> and um, the, 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 the issue with capitalism and the issue with runaway AI have kind of merged now <laughs> because the Moloch I talked about is exactly the capitalist Moloch that we have built an economy that has, is optimizing for only one thing, profit, right? And that worked great back when things were very inefficient and then now it's getting done better. And it worked great as long as the companies were small enough that they couldn't capture the regulators. But that's not true anymore, but they keep optimizing. And now we, they realize that, that they can, these companies can make even more profit by building ever more powerful AI, even if it's reckless but optimize more and more and more and more and more. So th this is Moloch again showing up. And I just want to, anyone here who has any concerns about about uh, late stage capitalism having gone a little too far, you should worry about super intelligence because it's the same villain in both cases. It's, it's Moloch. And optimizing one objective function aggressively, blindly is going to take us there. Yeah, we have to pause from time to time and look into our hearts and ask, why are we doing this? Is this, at, am I still going towards Austin or have I gone too far? You know, maybe we should change direction. China too would not be bothered by 
a longer halt because they don't want to lose control even more than the West doesn't. That's what I think. That's yeah. a really interesting argument. Like I have to actually really think about that, which the, the kind of thing people assume is if you develop an AGI, that open AI, if they're the ones that do it, for example, they're going to win. But mm -hmm. you're saying, no, they're, everybody loses. Yeah, it's gonna get better and better and better, and then kaboom, we all lose. That's what's gonna happen. When lose and win are defined on a metric of basically quality of life for human civilization and for Sam Altman. <laughs> I, I, Both. I, I, to, be, to be blunt, my personal guess, you know, and people can quibble with this, is that we're just gonna, there won't be any humans. That's it. That's what I mean by lose. You know, if you, if we've, we can see in history, once you have some species or some group of people who aren't needed anymore, it doesn't usually work out so well for them, right? Yeah. There were a lot of horses for that were used for traffic in Boston, and then the car got invented, and most of them got, you know, well, <laughs> we don't need to go there. And uh, if you look at um, humans, you know, right now we, why did the labor movement succeed? And after the industrial revolution, because it was needed. Mm -hmm. Even though we had a lot of Molochs and there was child labor and so on, you know, the company still needed to have workers. And that's why strikes had power and so on. If we get to the point where most humans aren't needed anymore, I think it's, not, it's quite naive to think that they're going to still be treated well. You know, we say that, yeah, yeah, everybody's equal and the government will always, we will always protect them. But if you look in practice, groups that are very disenfranchised, and don't have any actual power, usually get screwed. And uh, now, in, in, in the beginning, so Industrial Revolution, we automated away muscle work. But that got went worked out pretty well eventually because we educated ourselves and started doing, working with our brains instead and, and got usually more interesting, better paid jobs. But now we're beginning to replace brain work. So we, we replaced a lot of boring stuff like we got the pocket calculator, so you don't have people adding, multiplying numbers anymore at work. Fine, there were better jobs they could get, but now GPT four, you know, and the stable diffusion and techniques like this, they're really beginning to blow away some real some jobs that people really loved having. I, there was a heartbreaking article just post just yesterday on social media I saw about this guy who, who was doing three D modeling for gaming and he. And all of a sudden, now they got this new software. He just give says prompts, and he feels his whole job that he loved just lost its meaning, you know. And uh, I asked uh, GPT four to rewrite "Twinkle Twinkle Little Star" in the style of Shakespeare. I couldn't have done such a good job. It was just really impressive. You've seen a lot of the art coming out here, right? So I'm all for automating away the dangerous jobs and the boring jobs. But I, I think um, you hear a lot, some arguments which are too glib. Sometimes people say, well, that's all that's going to happen. We're getting rid of the boring, boring, uh, tedious, dangerous jobs. It's just not true. There are a lot of really interesting jobs that are being taken away now. Journalism is getting going to get crushed. Uh, coding is going to get crushed. I, I predict uh, the job market for programmers, the salaries are going to start dropping. You know, if you said you can code five times faster, you know, then you need five times fewer programmers. Maybe there will be more output also, but you'll still end up using fewer program, needing fewer programmers than today. And I love coding. You know, I, I think it's super cool. Um, so we, we we need to stop and ask ourselves why again are we doing this as humans, right? I feel that AI should be built by humanity for humanity. And let's not forget that. It shouldn't be by Moloch for Moloch. Or what it really is now is kind of by humanity for Moloch, which doesn't make any sense. It's for us that we're doing it. And, and um, it would make a lot more sense if we build, develop, figure out gradually and safely how to make all this tech. And then we think about what are the kind of jobs that people really don't want to have, you know, and automate them all away. The and then we ask, what are the jobs that people really find meaning in like maybe 
taking care of children in the daycare center, maybe doing art, et cetera, et cetera. And, and even if it were possible to automate that way, we don't need to do that, right? It's, we built these machines. Well, it's possible that we redefine or rediscover what are the jobs that give us meaning. Yeah. So for me, the thing, it is really sad. Like I, <laughs> half the time I'm excited, half the time I'm uh, crying as I'm, <laughs> as I'm generating code because I kind of love programming. It's uh yeah. it's the act of creation. You yeah. you have yeah. an idea, you design it and then you bring it to life and it does something, especially yeah. if there's some intelligence to it, it does something. Yeah. It doesn't even have to have intelligence. Printing printing hello world on screen. You 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 made a little machine and it it comes to life. Yeah. And uh there's a bunch of tricks you learn along the way because you've been doing it for for many many years. And then for, to see AI be able to generate all the tricks you thought were special. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's very. Uh, it um, it's it's scary. Yeah. It's almost painful, like a loss, uh, loss of innocence. Maybe like yeah. Maybe when when I was younger, uh, I remember before I learned that sugar is bad for you. You should be on a diet. I remember I enjoyed candy deeply in a way I just can't anymore. That I know is bad for me. I enjoyed it unapologetically, fully, just intensely, and I just I lost that. Now I feel like a little bit of that is lost for me with program or being lost with programming. Mm -hmm. Similar as it is for uh, the the 3D modeler, no longer being able to really enjoy the art of modeling uh, 3D things for gaming. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what to make sense of that. Maybe I would rediscover that the true magic of what it means to be human is connecting with other humans, to have conversations like this. I don't know. To uh, to have sex, to have to eat food, to really intensify the value from conscious experiences versus like yeah. creating other stuff. You're pitching the rebranding again from Homo sapiens to Homo sapiens. <laughs> Homo sapiens, the, the, yeah. the, the meaningful experiences. And just to inject some optimism in this here so we don't sound like a bunch of gloomers, <laughs> you know, we can totally have our cake and eat it. You hear a lot of totally bullshit claims that we can't afford having more teachers, yeah. have to cut the number of nurses. You know, that's just nonsense, obviously. With anything, even quite far short of AGI, we can dramatically improve, grow the GDP and produce this wealth of, of goods and services. It's very easy to create a world where everybody is better off than today, mm -hmm. including the richest people can be, be better off as well, right? It's not a zero-sum game in you know, technology. Again, you can have two countries like Sweden and Denmark had all these ridiculous wars century after century. And uh, Sometimes that Sweden got a little better off because it got a little bit bigger, and then Denmark got a little bit better off because Sweden got a little bit smaller. And and but then we then technology came along, and we both got just dramatically wealthier without taking away from anyone else. It was just a total win for everyone. And uh, AI can do that on steroids. If you can build safe AGI, if you can build super intelligence, you know, basically all the limitations that cause harm today can be, complete, can be completely eliminated, right? It's a wonderful you talk, possibility. And this, this is not sci-fi. This is something which is clearly possible according to the laws of physics. And I, we can talk about ways of making it safe also. Um, but unfortunately, that'll only happen if we steer in that direction. That's absolutely not the default outcome. That's why income inequality keeps going up. That's why the life expectancy in the U.S. has been going down now. I think it's four years in a row. Mm -hmm. I was just read a heartbreaking study from uh, the CDC about how something like one third of all teenage girls in the U.S. have been thinking about suicide. You know, like those are steps in the totally the wrong direction. And and it's important to keep our eyes on the prize here that we can. We have the power now for the first time in the history of our species to harness artificial intelligence, to help us really flourish and help bring out the best in our humanity rather than the worst of it, to help us uh, have really fulfilling experiences that feel truly meaningful and, and re 
you and I shouldn't sit here and dictate the future generations what they will be. Let them figure it out, but let's give them a chance to live and, and not foreclose all these possibilities for them by just messing things up, right? 